how to install Ampachi on an old wireless router. It's actually very easy. It may seem very daunting with all the commands that you have to run, but I'm going to do all of them right now. Some access points or some routers may be a little different. You may have to work through a few problems on your own. However, I'm going to run through the install right now and uh, you'll see. It'll work at the end. It may not be the fastest thing in the world, but it will work. So the first thing you want to do is format the external hard drive. I've already done that, and that's because the software I use, Partition Wizard, uh, it's the mini tool Partition, uh, Partition Wizard is free. However, as you can see, it doesn't show up on the, on the capture software, so I can't show you how to do it. But essentially, I have three partitions. The first partition is a 5 gig partition, and it's ext4 and that's going to be used for the system the second partition is a linux swap and that is 260 megabytes and the reason i do 260 is the software only allows two decimal places from a gig so 256 wouldn't work so i just did 26 which would be 260 i'll never use that much uh, swap space but it's there if i need it and if i am using that much i'm in trouble because it will be ungodly slow the router i'm using only has 64 megs of ram and the third one is a data partition, and that's going to be NTFS, and that's about 460 gigabytes. So that's what I have to work with. So it's plugged in. So let's set up the router. I'm using root root for you know password and login just for this demo. So the first thing I want to do is do a package update. I already have, obvi obviously, as you can see, I already have OpenWRT and everything's configured on this. And we're going to install HTOP and Nano. HTOP is a uh, task manager and Nano is a text editor. And let's do this. And what I usually do is I duplicate the session and I run HTOP on the other one. And as you can see, there's the CPU usage. Here's the memory usage, and here's the swap. There is no swap yet because it's not configured, and here's all the processes. So let's install some of the apps and drivers just to get the drive working. And what else do I want? Oh, block mount. Might need... Now these things aren't the most powerful, as a matter of fact a, a Raspberry Pi would just blow this thing out of the water, but it's what I got and if you're doing this and you have a spare one, it's what you got. And it does work. It's going to say that block mount is obsoleted and that's fine, it'll work anyway. So let's reboot. There it comes back. Okay. All right. So let's do F disk L, and there's our drive. SDA one is the five gig partition. SDA2 is the 266 meg partition, and then there's the data partition. And the reason I made the data partition NTFS is that way I can unplug it and plug it into a Windows computer and easily transfer data back and forth without having to install any other third-party uh, Linux drivers or anything like that. So first thing I want to do is let's go here, and we're going to go to mount points, and I want to mount the swap if it's not already, and it's not. Let's do this. And there's the swap. So now we can close this and we can move on with what we got to do. So in the mount directory, that's where you want to place all your mounts. And we're going to make a directory SDA1, which is going to be the system directory or the root directory. 
and we're going to mount this partition to that directory. So now if we go there, there it is. So now, and what we're going to do now is if I can type properly, we're going to bind root with this directory and now we're going to yeah, we're going to tar up everything and essentially copy everything over to the external. Okay, so now we want to go to nano and we want to I think I have everything there. SDA1. And we're going to reboot again. Now when this comes back up, and I should have done this to show you, but when I, when this comes back up, we're going to look at the drive space, and it should show drive space used 0%. Now there is obviously going to be some used, but out of uh, 5 gigs, actually it might be 1% or 2% used versus the 60 or 70 percent that's being used now for only a uh, small amount of flash that's actually on the device because it should boot now from the external. Okay, so it shows the root is zero and available is 462, so we're looking at five gigs there. So now we can move on. Now we want to update the package list again. We're going to install 3G or uh, third generation NTFS support so we can read the data partition. Uh, we're going to install wget and we're going to install uh, certificates so that it can read uh, SSL so we can actually download from secure sites or from secure uh, repositories and unzip. I think the signal is pretty low on that. It's actually connected to the wireless network. I think the signal is kind of low. Alright, now we're going to install I'm in North America, so we need to install the time zones for it, because PHP is going to need that. Now, if we look, we have a www directory. Since this is going to run on a web server, we're going to need our own www directory. Now, what a lot of people will do is they will make a directory within this. They'll make a subdirectory, and they'll call it Apache or whatever. I know it may not be the proper way to do it. But I'm making my own. I just like things separate. I'm going to make my own directory. Now we're going to do a wget. So let's go to the Apache website. Uh, excuse our dogs. They like to bark. And we're going to download all. So what I do is copy the link address and paste it in there. And we're going to let it download. Okay, so now that that's done downloading, we'll do 0.9 all zip. Now you can remove the zip file just by typing rm. Apache 3.8.9 underscore all zip, but I'm gonna leave it on there. It's not hurting anything, and it's there should I need it in the future. So now we're gonna install our web server. Instead of installing Apache, I'm gonna install Light PD. 
it's it's a lighter weight web server than Apache. It's it's it does better on uh, yeah. Port 80 is already in use, and that's fine because it is already in use. So now we're going to go to Nano, which is the text editor. And let's change the document root to www2. And the server port is going to be 81. The index file names already have index.php, which is what we want. And I think we're good for now. Actually, no, we're going to have to add MonCGI. <clears throat> Okay, it's not installed just yet. That's fine. We'll deal with that in a minute. So now we want to install uh, PHP 5 and PHP 5 CGI. And we're just going to get a lot of those plugins out of the way right now, because that's stuff that Apache will need. Don't necessarily need to get it up and running, but it's something that will need it during the setup, so might as well just install them now. Alright, can I install PHP iConf? Oh, I typed that wrong. There is actually a command IPKG in other distributions. You get them mixed up and you just jump in between them, I guess. All right, nano. So we're gonna edit the PHP INI file, and we want to change the document root. So we gotta find that. What we can do is do a Control W, and we can look for doc underscore root. And there it is. So we want to change that to www2, and we want to exit, I think on this version, uh, there it is. We're going to need to add .php and dog's barking again at nothing. Now, let's install MySQL. And it's saying that uh, the directory doesn't exist. That's because we have to create a data directory for it. And we're going to do that by doing nano etc my.cnf. And we're going to go down to data directory. 
and I'm going to change that to uh, server my SQL mount data temp I don't know what that is I'm gonna make that I gotta create that directory so let's do this while I'm sitting here Close that. Install DB. All right, so now we're going to change the root password for the, for the MySQL server. We just started the server. And I'm going to make the password root. I know that's very unsecure, but I'm doing that just for this demo. All right, so we're going to edit the php.ini file. And we're going to look for... Let's do a where is. Uh, I think it's date time zone. And if you're unsure what your date and time zone is, just look here. Um, this is all the supported time zones. So Mayan is going to be, and it changes with each version. And this is an older version. U.S. Eastern. And we're going to leave all these commented out. We're going to save that. I'm going to make a directory called data. And that's where the music's going to be. I could just call it music, but I'll call it data. And we're going to edit nano all right now this is like an auto exec script so anything that you put in here is going to be run at boot up I'm sorry uh, data so it's going to run mount and it's going to try to mount SDA 3 to the data directory and then it's going to exit so if we do S, F disk L, yeah, SDA3, and there is a data directory, and capitaliza capitalization does matter. And I should, I don't know if I wiped it or not, I should have data on it, if not, I'll add some just now. Okay, so it did mount it. Excellent. So let me do this. Okay, so here it is. I just plugged it into my computer. And you can see there it is. And I'm going to copy a folder over called YouTube Music. I'm also going to get my iPod and copy some music over from that so that we have other stuff on there as well. Okay, so I copied some music to the drive, and it's booting up now. And if we go to the data directory, 
there is all the for or the um, the artists and the albums, and I have one in there. Let's see, I have one called YouTube Music. Okay, so now that that's there, let's try and access the lip server. All right, cool. So we go to continue go through the checks and this is all the stuff remember I said that there were all these plugins that we needed might as well just install them now well that's what all this is here curl zlib gd uh, the up max upload size if you're going to be actually uploading stuff to Apache there is an option that you can do where you can upload albums directly through the web interface instead of unplugging the drive you can go back to the php.ini file and change that. I'm not going to because I'm not going to use it. Uh, test whether PHP can write to config. This is not strictly necessary to streamline the... Alright, so what I want to do... What I'm going to do... is I'm going to go to the config folder and blow it wide open with, with permissions. I know that's not the proper thing to do, but this is what I'm doing. Deal with it. Okay, so now... I found... For whatever reason, you can use localhost as the MySQL host name if you're if it's a local uh, database if it's actually installed on the same hardware. However, I found I would get errors. So if I just do 127.0.0.1, which is the IP address, the local host IP address, it works. So the use the database username, we're just going to call it AMP with a password of AMP. Easier to type that way and insert database and web path is just going to be that uh, amp amp I'm going to choose minimalist because I'm not going to be streaming videos from this I do not have transcoding enabled because I don't have flack installed or I'm sorry ffmpeg installed um, or anything like that uh, possibly a plex backend uh, because the processor on this just can't handle it, so there's not going to be any transcoding. Uh, as far as players, if you have, this runs the uh, the backends for uh, Subsonic, Plex, uh, has the, the DAP and WebDAV. I haven't used those. I haven't used these as far as uh, Apache is concerned. And I'm not sure how compatible it is, but apparently, if you have an iPhone app or a uh, or an Android app that you know is for Subsonic, apparently you can point it to to this, and it will believe that it's a Subsonic server. All right, cannot founder no host name. Password and I'm make I'm making the password admin, admin. And it's going to want to update. And now all this is actually running on that router right now. So no updates needed, of course, because we just downloaded it.
and there we go. So, first thing we want to do is go into an add into catalogs preferences and add a catalog. And a catalog is is a library. Think of it that way. And we're going to call it music. It's a local catalog, and the path is going to be the local path, which is data. And I'm going to add catalog. And as you can see, it's really just, you know, pegging this thing. The processor was never meant to do anything like this, so it's really going to be working it pretty hard. And I'm assuming the YouTube music is going to show up under Unknown Orphaned. And it's still importing, so it's going to be really slow. So as you can see, we're starting to get some of the, the album artwork in. And we got the artist artwork. And it's like I said, it's not the fastest. And we're, we're making it do a lot at one time right now. Let's see what we can do about Dire Straits. And it's trying to multitask with one core. You see all these. But the nice thing is once these are downloaded and created, it's saved, so you don't you only have to do this once. Okay, so this has been going for a while, and it's still downloading some of the album information. It's starting to get the cover art and the artist artwork. And I'll show you the artist here, and it's still working pretty hard. And this is gonna take a while the first time you actually do a mass import of you know a lot of albums and a lot of artists. Again, this is just an old router, so it's nothing super powerful. But once this is done, it's all saved to a database, so it's you only have to do it once. So it's one of these deals where you just set it up and go to bed, come up, wake up the next morning, and it's it's all done for you. So as you can see, Billy Joel, that's there. Dire Straits showed up. Uh, it's still working on on these ones. And if it doesn't find one, you can manually go in and select it. And I'll just play something just so you see how it works.